It's quite rather depressing that in today's age, we're significantly discouraged or intimidated by the narrative of the masses and sometimes even by our own friends and parents from engaging in competitive endeavors or rather being voluntarily subdued from our competitive spirits or tendencies because of the massive fear of being harmed, humiliated and having our egos burned to the ground and spawning an endless barrage of mental health issues. I do believe these particular narratives within the attitude that we have formed through various social conditionings is one of the major hindrances for us in taking the much necessary initiative to pursue the creative and professional endeavors that we are captivated by, therefore eventually handicapping ourselves early on in our lives from cultivating the necessary skills to become competent or capable in various productive endeavors. One of the most popular saying in this day of age is that comparison is the thief of joy and that we should only compare in between ourselves to avoid damaging our self-esteem. Unfortunately, in this competitive world that we live in, comparison is innately inevitable. When we put ourselves out there in the market to determine the extent of our values, our strengths and weaknesses will always face constant judgments and juxtapositions from those who witness them and also others, especially when it comes to specific creative professional endeavors that involve solving other people's problems or fulfilling the cognitive and emotional void they're experiencing. Even though on the surface everything attempts to look seemingly respectful and righteous, you cannot expect a purely mutual sympathetic acceptance or treatment within a realm that demands excellence in performance. As competition is antagonistic by nature, everyone is trying to outdo one another to gain the credibility, status, resources and legitimacy that they desire within the social and professional hierarchy. So judgments, criticisms, comparisons, indignations and condemnations are all part of the game. Don't blame the people, blame the nature of the game. Like for example, in this self-improvement YouTube world, as much as I don't want to compare myself or compete with anyone within the same realm of endeavor, you gentlemen, the audience, the market, will inevitably do it for me and them regardless. Who is better at this and that, bluntly pinpointing our strengths and weaknesses, weighing them up altogether and giving us the credibility and attention accordingly to your own individual judgments. This is just the competitive nature of the business, and it happens everywhere whether you like it or not. On one hand, it is true that too much comparing and contrasting ourselves with other people which most of us are doing will eventually lead to utter apprehension in terms of the circumstances and choices of our lives due to the eventual unrelatability and inapplicability of other people's circumstances and choices in reference to ours. Because the more we mindlessly or carelessly compare, the more we become idealistic and fantastical in our approach, and thus bringing us further away from the realistic or rational expectations of our own circumstances that we live in. Like for example, it is preposterous for me to extensively compare and contrast myself against PewDiePie, who is operating in a different niche of endeavor and who is an early adopter on the platform. We simply just operate in a different landscape and dimension of the business, and thus it is inappropriate for me to take him as competition. Just like how a football athlete is statistically and conceptually inappropriate to be compared competitively against an e-sport athlete, because they're operating in a different realm. This inappropriateness and unrelatability of comparisons is often why we eventually get discouraged by our insecurities or our lack of confidence or assurance within our capabilities. And a lot of the times, in order to direct attention away from them, we start to offensively discredit and ridicule other people's seemingly better circumstances. Now, on the other hand, lacking or being completely absent from comparisons or competitions could sabotage our own progress as we don't have a solid and reliable frame of reference to measure our own position or status in the professional or social hierarchy. Not to say that we can't use ourselves as a frame of reference. Of course you can. In fact, it is necessary to monitor our own progress. However, when it comes to setting goals or achievements, making comparisons singularly with ourselves will not be as much of a legitimate and computable of a reference to rely on. For example, for example, say you want to eventually reach an elite level in weightlifting, with other past or present data and information from other weightlifters to compare and make a sound judgment and reference from, how can you exactly know when you've reached that quote-unquote elite status you are pursuing? By self-proclaiming that you are an elite? I don't think so. You need information from your competition to solidify your judgments further to determine your position in your personal journey more effectively and legitimately. So you see, gentlemen, from an objective point of view, you should not use comparison and competition as an avoidant excuse for the threat of self-deprecation and feeling pathetically sorry for yourselves, which are entirely within your control, or because you fear that that single moment of defeat or inferiority is literally the end of the world for your potential to excel at your chosen endeavor. 
Shut the fuck up. It's not. You will learn and grow more from getting the worst from competing against a superior individual than any of those who laughed at your defeat. Because they never had the balls to measure their capabilities while you do. Do not fear to compare and compete. You entirely avoiding competition is the same as taking away the best opportunity to showcase or demonstrate your capabilities while also robbing yourself the best chance to evaluate your potential. Change your attitude around them and utilize them as a motive for your thirst towards excellence instead. Because one beautiful thing that they do to you if you use them the right way is that they incentivize you profoundly to take that much needed initiative to just act. Now, an important thing to mention is that I completely understand the singularity of purpose narrative that most of us in the self-improvement world are trying to achieve by making ourselves as the sole frame of reference for our own respective endeavors. You know, the quote-unquote, I do things purely for myself kind of attitude. And I was this type of person as well not too long ago, and I was wrong, as I became aware of the critical limitations that it presents. Because an important point to remember is that we are social creatures by nature and no matter how singular we perceive our motives to be, there will always be a part within those motives that puts an emphasis on us making the efforts to be perceived more positively by others, no matter how small, consciously or unconsciously. And there is no shame in that. It's not like we're doing it purely for the sake of other people's approval because if that's the case, we would be doing it purely for the sake of clout and attention. Nothing involved with our own personal objectives that we want to achieve. But this is different. This is about self-actualization and being perceived by other people the way we want to be perceived according to our own terms, not the other way around. Thank you for watching.